Lost Wally. Never forget Australia. This little known story starts not far from the Western Front in 1918, the last year of the war. A ragged, hungry little French boy, an orphan of the First World War, comes out of the fog on a freezing cold Christmas night and wanders into the Australian Airmen's Mess of Number 4 Fighter Squadron, where they were celebrating Christmas. I'm Harvey Reynolds. I'm the commanding officer of Number 4 Squadron, Royal Australian Air Force. What you're about to see is the story of Henri Tovel. This is a story that's woven into our squadron's history from 100 years ago in World War I. very depressed and she burnt his uniform in the copper and I can remember the sadness that Timmy felt because we used to always go and sneak into his, the back room and look at his uniform as it hung up in the cupboard. And then when we found that Gert, she was just so devastated by the sadness attached to it that she burnt it. The family has a, um, um, a notebook at home um, of Tim recording all the donations by all the people in the mess tent to provide money for young diggers' uniform. Veterans of Number 4 Squadron raised money to place a memorial of young digger on the grave in Faulkner Cemetery in Hadfield in Melbourne. The dawn of the 24th of April uh, 1918. Over there to my left we can see the village of Villers Bretonneux through the gloom. Coming towards us, 13 A7V German tanks. Great lumbering monsters, slab sided steel, bristling with machine guns, crews of 18 to 26 men in each one. Amongst them, Mephisto, that famous uh, tank. It's not going to have a good day. First of all, engine failure. It stops. Just a little away from here, the crew climb out, hammers, chisels, banging, crashing, get the machine working again. Heading towards where we are now, but sadly, an enormous shell hole. They don't see it in the gloom, they slip into the shell hole, stuck there. Because of the size of these machines, impossible, and they have to abandon it. And Mephisto really is, it's the most tangible object we have from the events that took place in and around Villas Bretonneux, and I think for that reason alone, it makes it a truly significant vehicle. These monsters were hot, noisy and cramped with up to an amazing 26 men on board. The narrow gauge that the generals like John Monash used so brilliantly in the Battle of Amel and more particularly in the Battle of Amiens, all in proximity to Villers Bretonneux. King George V visited the Western Front and on the 12th of August 1918, on the battlefield, conferred on Monash the insignia of the knighthood, which had earlier been awarded to him. That was the first such dubbing in 200 years. A very moved French President Clemenceau spoke to the Australian soldiers on July 7, 1918. He said, When the Australians came to France, we expected a great deal of you. I shall go back and say to my countrymen, I have seen the Australians. In a quadrangle of the Victoria School in Villers Bretonneux, is a large sign painted over a porch on a green background in yellow. Do not forget Australia. I have written about this little village in my book, Two Pennies. The two begins in France. The First World War had been raging in Europe for almost four years. The German army was determined to capture Amiens a town close to Villers-Bretonneux and only 70 miles from Paris. 